and building a brand is very important. It's one of the things people out there realize when they start companies, okay, you got your website, you got your business card, you got your email. Well, you don't do three different names for each. You name each one exactly the same. You stick to branding yourself and always be repetitive in the same way you represent. What the lessons do you have for the entrepreneurs listening, looking back at this, the fact that you were willing to risk everything on someone you've never met, you were building a good business. Yeah, you were burnt out, but to risk everything just because you heard, let's get ready to rumble. What went on through your mind and how can the listeners apply that to their business today? Well, you know, the first thing I always tell everybody is find out what you're passionate about. What, what are you passionate about in life? There was a passion for me when I saw him announcing, there's a passion to be involved in sports and entertainment. Once you realize your passion, if you can monetize it, then you're not going to work. You're, you're living life, what I call life by design, right? You're waking up every day to live your life. And the other thing is, is that you really have to have a go for it attitude. You know, 100% of people uh, fantasize, dream, think about it, but really only 2% ever really put it into action. And those are the ones that are the leaders, the CEOs, the whole bit. Now, I'm not saying they're better than anybody else, but life is like a pyramid. I don't mean a pyramid scheme. At the top, you have the CEO, the vice presidents, everybody leading down to the people that pack the boxes, answer the phones and do all the, the legwork for the company. Everybody's just important because this base has to stay strong. Otherwise it all falls apart. And that's where leadership comes in. So you have to realize where your, where your assets are, your limitations are, and just go for it. You know, don't wait for things to happen, make them happen. Right. And sometimes you've got to follow your dream. And I'm a poker player. It's not just what the book says. It's what your gut says. Does your gut tell you, this is what you want to do. Is this really it? You've got to really feel it because if you're not passionate about your, your choice of pursuit, when, when you do get knocked down on the canvas in business, you're not going to get up like Rocky said and move forward and punch harder than ever because without passion, it, you're going to lack that one extra thing you need within yourself to achieve greatness, to achieve success. And like I always say, even on my podcast, when you step on that road that you set your goals for to achieve your goal, it's not always about being the number one best person in the world. It's about you being the best you can be to do it because if you're the best you can be, then you're winning. You're winning that, you're winning that thing and whatever it takes you, number one millionaire, 50,000 a year, 100,000 a year, <clears throat> whatever it is, but you got to have passion. You got to be willing to drive and do what it takes and do your homework. So listening to your story though, if, if the listeners knew the, the whole story with your brother in the war being stamped as buffer, cause his last name wasn't buffer. If that never happened, you would never have met him. Um, an announcer for the UFC, not being able to make it that night and them calling you uh, while you were with your mom, I well, believe you that's, <laughs> I, I, I did my research while you were with your mom and you accepting it and then them still not even hiring you. And then you had to go out and, and push it. It would seem like there's a lot of luck that comes down to your story and how you were there. But I like to believe there's a lot of hard work, talent, preparation, oh. skill that was involved. How do you see your story? Um, my bufferism, I call it BSC in life. You have to have balls, skill, and confidence. If you're lacking one of these, these, those three factors, you don't sit down at the blackjack table. You don't sit down at the board table. You make sure you're totally confident and prepared, but you got to have that 10, 20% luck factor on your side too. You know, it does play into the role, right? I'm a really good poker player. Um, I know some great poker players. I played them too, but you know what? No matter how good we are, no matter how good we read people, there's times when that car comes out, you got to have that luck factor on your side. And luck factor in business is not just a turning of a card. Luck factor in business is timing. You know, timing, uh, the endeavor of choice. Is it, is, it, is it really, is it past? Is it present? Is it the future? I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things to consider, right? But you got to have the intestinal fortitude. And again, I'll say it again and again and again. The passion for what you're doing. If you're just selling a widget to make a dollar, trust me, you're going to get bored and burned out quick. When I say quick, maybe a year, maybe 10 years, maybe 10 days, who knows? You're, you're also a showman, right? Can that be taught is, or is that, or is someone born with that skill and can one become, and I guess, how can one become one if it can be taught? And what are some tips that you have around, um, personal branding, I guess, and the importance of it in order to make yourself a staple, like right now you're a staple in the UFC and that came from personal branding. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're a big believer in personal brands. Oh, like I said, I'm a brander. First and foremost, that's why I just created the, I just created a company 
I co-founded a company called millions.co, right? Which you may have seen in my social media. The whole point of that is exactly what you're talking about. Athletes do not as a rule know how to brand themselves as talent does not as a rule know how to brand themselves. Branding is very important, especially in this world of social media for your followers and such. So what we did with millions.co is we take you and we create merchandise lines for you. We give you avenues to communicate with your fans where you can monetize it and charge them for videos like cameo or ask me anything or do fight companion watching type things like Joe Rogan does with your fans watching UFC and charge them 499 to watch it with you and answer questions. I want fighters to be able to make money just not on fight night when they're fighting, but to monetize themselves throughout the entire year. And we give 80% of all the profits back on the merchandise sales to the athletes where your average company will give you 10%. That's it. We give them 80%. I'm trying to teach them how to monetize themselves quickly and it doesn't cost them a thing. We pay all the money. We do everything. We just want you to join and promote. And um, that's a key factor. I mean, building a brand is very important. It's one of the things people out there realize when they start companies, okay, you got your website, you got your business card, you got your email. Well, you don't do three different names for each. You name each one exactly the same. You stick to branding yourself and always be repetitive in the same way you represent yourself, right? I'm Bruce Buffer, so it's brucebuffer.com. I'm Bruce Buffer. It's Bruce F. Bruce Buffer, right? Or Buffer Enterprise. Anyway, you got to make sure you create a uniformity and a familiarity so it clicks with people. And we live in an ADD society. People have very short attention spans, right? It's like I say when I announce, it's not what I say, it's how I say it. Because to get the punch, to get it across. Um, as far as somebody that wants to go into entertainment or performance, again, what are you good at? Where is it? I mean, I always had a gift for gab. I knew that I could be an announcer. I, I gave motivational speeches. I love being in front of crowds. I love motivating them way before I ever met my brother, Michael. Um, and the telemarketing world taught me a lot about that, you know, running... 150 salespeople and being the wolf of wall, wolf of LA, like the wolf of wall street, but not cheating people. Or if you ever saw Alec Baldwin and Glengarry Gary, Glenn Ross, that great speech he gave. I mean, I was like that, man, I was tough, but I always took care of my people and I always paid them and I always patted them on the back and I always made them feel good about what they did and, and encourage them and motivate them. I'm a motivator. I, I have a theory. If three feet of me is called, I want everybody to be happy, healthy, and prosperous. I don't even think about myself. I think about them first and it all comes back to me. And that's the way I deal with business. You know, how do you bring the energy if you're having a bad day? Right. So I think that's a lot of things for entrepreneurs or, or people listening. They have a bad day and they just write off the day. You got to go and you got to perform and you got to be out there. Um, no matter what emotions you're feeling right, right then and there, what tips do you have around that? Well, that's where your passion comes in again. Okay. I mean, let's take an example. Um, <clears throat> I blew my knee. I severed one of my ACLs the night before I had three UFCs in a row to do at a uh, lip sync contest for the UFC. Ridiculous. Did a little jump. My knee went. And this was after I severed the other one, announcing George St. Pierre in the octagon. Right. But let's talk about that first, uh, the second ACL. The doctor the next morning did an MRI said, you got to stay in bed four days. I go, no, I don't. I got to work. Right. I deal with fighters that put their blood, sweat, and tears on the line every time they step in the octagon. I can always get through a night of announcing. I've done it with a blown out back, 103 degree temperature, laryngitis just coming off. There's always, if you, if you have a job to do, you get it done. And there's an adage out there, the show must go on and the show must go on. <laughs>